So good good morning, everyone. Uh, thank you, Simon, for the invitation, for the opportunity to share a little bit of what we're doing. Uh, a quick outlook on Marfrig. So we're uh, basically a, a protein company, a meat company. We have our uh, beef slaughtering operation uh, based in South America. So we, we're based in, in Brazil, but we have operations in Uruguay and Argentina. And we source <coughs> beef internationally for, for many different markets. Uh, and we have also a U.S.-based business called Keystone Foods, where we work with quick service restaurants globally. Uh, we have McDonald's as one of our main clients. And uh, uh, with Keystone Business, we have operations uh, in, in the Middle East and Far East and Oceania. So we're, we're quite focused on, on delivering this product to these big chains. Uh, this is a short view of our global sustainability strategic pillars. So we have, uh, we have set this plate here where we have customers, environment, workplace, social, and suppliers. Of course, lately we've been quite focused on the supplier side especially on issues like animal welfare and deforestation uh, in the Amazon, where, where we're going to talk a little bit more. Uh, <clears throat> this is an initiative that we have in Brazil called Marfrig Club. Uh, Marfrig Club is a, is a farmer relationship program uh, where we have a checklist with social, environmental, and animal welfare respect, let's say. So we gather information from from different um, protocols in the market, such as Global Gap, Europe Gap, and demands from clients like Tesco and McDonald's and other clients. And we, we have made something a little more, more simple and easy to get to the farm level and, and implement that. So what we do, we, we apply this checklist on the farm and we classify farmers since beginner, uh, going through bronze, silver, gold, and platinum. So the platinum level is the highest level of social environmental uh, activity on farm level. And the platinum needs to be approved to Europe. So we have a higher level of, um, of a traceability on this farm. This is a fig figure for 2015, uh, where it was around uh, more than 4,000 farms. So these 4,000 farms will really have much higher level of information on the farm. And this slot, animal slaughtered uh, last year uh, more than 1.3 million alone. Uh, just a little bit on certification. So uh, as my free beef, we, we, we as a group, we're divided in two, two divisions. Keystone Food, which is the U.S.-based business, uh, which is focused on quick service restaurants, and my free beef, which is Brazil, Uruguay, and Argentina. These are the four certifications that we work nowadays, we believe that uh, this is a way to differ differentiate a little bit our product. You know very well that beef is, is a commodity, but we're trying to, to bring to the market some options to uh, share this, this information that we have on the field with consumers and try to add value uh, for producers. So uh, this is an initiative that we have some partners uh, in the room. We have some Bergen, for example, that's our partner in Europe for Rainforest Alliance Beef and Burger. So we, we were the first company to have Rainforest Alliance certified beef in 2012. We also have made some, we have sold some leather for Gucci, for, for a leather bag. So this is one thing on the beef industry that we, we do not talk much. We talk a lot about beef. We don't talk much about leather. On leather, you can do a bag, so we can add a lot of value. So if it's just, just a, a point here to raise on the importance of leather. Uh, this is Rainforest Alliance is Brazil. You have organic beef in Uruguay. That's, uh, this is USDA organic, but it's exported into US and Europe. Uh, Viva Grass Feed is a program that we have in Uruguay that's be, it's, uh, no hormones, no antibiotics, and no animal, any kind of animal feeding, or animal originated feeding. Uh, and it's grass fed, so this is something also that's growing. Uh, we, we're seeing growing demand on grass feed animal and, and especially this issue on non antibiotics. So, this is aimed also at US and European markets. And this is our latest. Uh, this is Alianza del Passau. This is um, Alianza del Passau is a congregation of four South American companies, uh, sorry, South American countries Uruguay, Argentina, Paraguay, and Brazil uh, for the conservation of nature grasslands of the Pampa.
So we talk a lot about Cerrado, we talk about a lot uh, Amazon, but I think we still have to talk a lot about the Pampa, right? Because we have huge things being done on Pampa and uh, we have a lot of biodiversity and the bird is the... From is the Black bird. Yeah. He's the, he's, he, he's, the, he's the symbol <laughs> of this conservation, Dangerous right? Species. Yeah, so this is, this is his bird life. Bird yeah. <laughs> And this is based on bird life. So, of course, uh, you see, you, you, we have the frog and the bird. <laughs> and uh, we, need, we need to communicate that. This is a challenge. But this is, both they're very high quality beef. This is the cow in between. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, we're, we're, we're trying to push that. This is, this is being produced in South Brazil on the Pampa. So, this protocol is interesting to share with you. That's 50%. Uh, the main request is 50% of uh, grasslands on the farm. So in, in South Brazil, we are Pampa, we are, we are Pampa Biome, and we have around 100 farms which comply with this protocol, and we're selling that to Carrefour in Brazil. We sell the whole animal, uh, the four quarter, the hinds, the flanks, everything, and we are now negotiating the ladder with a leading French uh, footwear brand, so we're going to communicate this bird story to the end consumer. This is an opportunity and, and we see that as a differentiation. Uh, on, on deforestation, so uh, we, we have this agreement that we've made with Greenpeace in 2009, uh, where we have, we were the first, it's important to, share, to stress to you, we were the first company to, to set the moratorium on beef uh, sourcing in Amazon. So we have five main criteria, which is not to source from Ibama, blacklist, which is the, the, the environmental agency blacklist, not to force from forced labor list, not to source from forced labor list farms. And we have also three criteria that we need to develop a, a geospatial monitoring, a satellite uh, monitoring to comply with, which is not sourcing from uh, indigenous land <coughs> conservation units in newly deforested areas. So. We have, that, we have this cutting date of 2009, and since that time, we are monitoring our direct suppliers on their practices. So we can guarantee today for sure that we have 100% of compliance on our direct suppliers. Of course, we still have the issue on indirect suppliers. This is, this is an issue. This is something that we really need to discuss. But when we're talking about uh, direct suppliers, we're, we're, we're quite covered. Uh, some information on the monitoring, uh, again, this is the Amazon biome, so we have legal Amazon, which is statewide, and we have uh, Amazon biome, which is more uh, uh, another kind of definition. These are our supplies in blue. Uh, this number is always changing, so it's, uh, it's almost nine now, but it's uh, around uh, 8, 000, more than 8,500 farmers monitored and we have uh, more than 6,000 which are approved and almost 2,000 blocks. Uh, we monitor an area the size of the UK, <coughs> or the size of Italy, or two Greece's. Um, let's say 26 million hectares. So when we, when we have uh, European co uh, companies with uh, commitments to zero deforestation and to reduce their GAG emissions, on, on supply chains, why don't we do that? We have a lot of forests in our supply chain. We have a lot of producers that have forests. So how can we uh, bring these producers together and pay them to keep the forest standing, and then we use that to offset emissions in Europe? This is something that we keep pushing. And, uh, and uh, this, is, this is important also to share with you that's audited by third part. We just had the released of the report for the, the purchases of last year. So it's, it's, it's all uh, third part auditing. This is just an example of, of the monitoring. Uh, you see here a, a farm in Comodoro, a municipality in the state of Mato Grosso. You see the perfect boundary of the farm. Uh, one important thing to tell you that we have 100% of our source in 2015 with boundary. So we have the perfect boundary of all farms we're purchasing from. So we're a very unique company in Brazil also to have that. And this, this farm is blocked because of those two deforestation over there. So if there is deforestation, it's blocked. Maybe IBAMA, the environmental agency, they will not get to all deforestations. We can get a wider picture and block them. Uh, 
and that is an indigenous land. So you see a deforestation within indigenous land. But this guy, uh, this producer, is blocked uh, because of that deforestation. Uh, just, just some, some uh, information on our audit report. We, we just released that on September 28th. Um, we, for the, for the fourth, uh, fourth year, we have uh, zero non-compliance. So we have uh, four plants audited in the, in the Amazon region. 100% um, of farms with, with boundary. 100% of cattle purchased with CAR, which is the environmental licensee in Mato Grosso and Pará State. And we have implemented uh, uh, RFI2, which is a, a document that we ask the direct supplier to inform who he bought from. So if I'm buying from Francisco, Francisco needs to tell me who he bought from. And then we will check the social security of his suppliers. Of course, it's, it's not the solution, but it's the first step that we uh, have taken this way. Uh, just to explain you a little bit of, of how it works in Brazil, so we, we purchase cattle from these guys on finishing, but the, the issue for us today is not the direct suppliers, as I mentioned to you, we're okay with direct suppliers. The issue is raising and breeding. We, we don't know, still don't know much what is happening there, and that's a challenge, and that's why we believe we can try to solve that together. So for indirect, we have the RFI2, and uh, we're working on, on this group from GPFI in Brazil, a group of indirect suppliers in Brazil, to discuss solutions to that. How can we do that? How can we manage indirect suppliers? Uh, and on direct suppliers, we have all those criteria implemented. And this is an important information for you. Uh, of the total, more than 2 million heads slaughtered in 2015, we have 49% of full cycle farms. <coughs> So this is the information that we, we collect on farm level. And it means that 49% of farms we purchased in 2009, they were breeding, raising, and finishing. Okay, so it doesn't mean that they may not buy from outside, but we are a little bit safer because we know that they have breeding, raising, and finishing. So if this farm is approved, it's approved for the full cycle, right? Of course, they may buy from outside, and we need to check this outside sourcing farm. But this is another step that we took that gets us a little more warranty on the rest of supply chain. And just to, to close, uh, we have some, some noted some opportunities and challenges. So opportunities, we say, uh, this value chain cooperation that, that's being conducted uh, with more support and TNC, uh, NWF, and, and World Wildlife Fund. The main point here is standardization, so people get confused, <coughs> companies, big companies get confused, so what, what is the criteria I should take? So this is very important intelligent initiative to get everybody on the same level. Communication to end consumer, we talk a lot about that, so we need to communicate that through buying this beef you are supporting, improvement <coughs> in the field. Better explore leather market, so this is something that we keep saying, that we, we talk a lot about beef and we don't talk much about leather. Uh, we need to do more on leather. Uh, GAG emissions reduction projects in the Amazon supply chain. So we have companies in Europe with commitments and we have forests in the Amazon. So how can we connect that and, and tell the producers that, uh, that uh, by uh, preserving their legal reserve or their repair and errors, they can get money from companies in Europe that need, needs to, to meet these targets. Uh, increase and differentiate deforest, uh, def uh, deforestation free uh, beef sales, so we want to get uh, preference on business. That's the last one. And the challenge, indirect suppliers, so we have something happening. Land tenure and indigenous land, so we don't have a blacklist for that, so that would be interesting for us to have a blacklist. Other meat packers and retail engagement, so we don't want the cattle that we don't buy ending up on high-end markets in Europe, so if we don't buy, no one should buy. And Innovative financial mechanisms in the Amazon, we have dif difficulty on getting the money to ranchers. So I think we have a, a challenge to work on financial incentives. <laughs>